Douglas, what are you doing? Come on, Douglas, what are you doing? All right, this is part two of my uh, how I designed the Main Central Lower Road, and today we're going to talk about uh, references, tools, and the selection of the locations I use to model the railroad. The primary references I use for designing my railroad are the Main Central in color, volumes one, two, and three, written by Jeremy F. Blant and George Melvin. George Melvin was a Main Central employee and spent a lot of his life uh, chronicling the Main Central in these books and in other uh, articles that he wrote for magazines. Although this is not all the references I used of uh, understanding operations and the practice of the Main Central, these are probably the primary ones and have the greatest amount of detail in the volumes. Where the Main Central in, co uh, in color books provided me the pictures and the background and the understanding, the siding diagrams book that I was able to get copies of when I was younger and have had for probably the last 30 years also provided a wealth of information, just basically siding, siding lengths, uh, layout of the track diagrams and stuff like that. Personally, I like to use the manual tools for layout design. I use the uh, HO scale template. This has been around since 1988. I have a couple of these. Uh, I use other templates like circle templates and also uh, just basically a ruler, pencils, eraser, sharpener, and I find these uh, easy to use. I also use colored pencils if I do a detailed diagram to put in buildings and foliage and stuff like that. Uh, I don't use the CAD programs either. I have them because of the learning curve and the fact that I spend most of my day working on a computer and do not want to do that all night also. For the rest of this video, I'll use the Siding Track Diagrams book, the actual sketches I drew up to plan the railroad, and then pictures of the locations that the sketches show. And this will hopefully help you understand how I designed it, you know, what I used, where I made the decisions of which parts to model. And the sidings diagrams are a wealth of information and show mile markers for the specific tracks, main line and sidings, length of the sidings in feet, length of the sidings in cars, I'm assuming 40 foot cars, switch and track numbers, section houses and other main central buildings that are critical to the operation rivers and streams, and roads and highways. So the next question was where to start for this portion of the railroad I was going to do, which was going to be the lower road. Royal Junction was not a good choice because really there was no traffic there other than the split of the lines, and I didn't want to try to simulate both those trains. A couple miles past Royal Junction was Yarmouth Junction, and Yarmouth Junction was a key interchange between the Grand Trunk and the Main Central had operational interest that I definitely wanted to include it. It also happened to be the place where CTT started going west into Rigby and where ABS started going east out of Yarmouth Junction. Continuing east out of Yarmouth Junction was Sodom Siding, and Sodom Siding after that was Freeport, and then there was Hillside, which was another siding. Sodom siding and hillside siding were both important sidings when it comes to the operation of the main central. Sodom was used to hold trains while they switched to Yarmouth Junction so they didn't block the intersection and actual Yarmouth Junction siding. And hillside is where they would oftentimes double trains coming out of Brunswick. So both of these were included on the railroad. On the overall look of the layout, the Yarmouth Junction was in the first corner that I built out of the train room. This is the detailed sketch of Yarmouth Junction. The Yarmouth Junction has a track that comes underneath that corner area there where it's very wide, and loops around about 270 degrees. Underneath there, it loops around the corner and goes to a three track staging yard, which is Portland Staging. Interchange is done on this track here. I deviated from the design by extending the two tracks that read go into the wall here and actually bent them so that they went parallel to the wall so I had a little bit more staging on that side. This is how the Yarmouth Junction currently looks on the layout. It is partially scenic with landforms and stuff but still has a lot of work and interestingly enough being the first part it was built it'll be the last part scenic. Sodom siding rather than being a separate siding was just extended from where the Yarmouth Junction's intersection was down the side of the room. Hillside siding is on the other side of the aisle after making a uh, sweeping curve on the uh, end of the peninsula aisle there at about 2% up to the uh, switch at Hillside. This is a current look at Sodom siding. Uh, there's a tire replacement program going on. And as you move around the corner, you'll see Hillside, 
hillside going around the peninsula, hillside switch on the other side of the peninsula, and then the track going down to Brunswick is the last picture here. As we head farther east on the uh, layout, we come to Brunswick Yard, which is actually two yards. Uh, but this was the focal point of operations on the lower level and one of the reasons why I chose this section of the main central to or build. Brunswick West Yard was used by the Lewiston Lower Turn, the Rockland Branch Train, and the Augusta Turn. All three of these trains would either pick up or drop off cars as needed to uh, support the two branch lines. The Augusta Turn actually went from Portland all the way up to Augusta. East Yards earlier in Main Central Times had been the focus of the Brunswick area, but uh, by this time the turntable, roundhouse, and a lot of the other tracks were no longer being used and basically you had the freight house and some uh, team tracks and at the top end of the Y you had the Lewis and Lower Branch at the far east end of Brunswick off the main line split off the Rockland Branch. In my rendition of the West Yard I was able to get all of the yard tracks into the actual plan just not the full length of the yard. And this is how Brunswick West Yard looks looking east from Church Street. This is the East Yard detail drawing. Now obviously there's a pencil and sketch there where I was thinking about changing it and in actuality the final layout was changed quite a bit and I'll show you that. Here we have the as-built version of the West Yard. There are two additional tracks that are next to the fascia and then you have the Lewiston Lower Branch which branches off and goes behind the helix up there in the corner. With that I think we'll call it a wrap for this uh, round part two of the how I designed the main central lower road. Next time we'll go over the road to Augusta starting at the uh, helix and moving up. From the Kapupu Hood gang, Chewbacca, Goose, Fu Man, and Boo Boo, we'd like to say thank you for watching.